This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. I'm delighted to be meeting with you here. So in this quick answer episode, I'm going to be talking about finger plucking on the guitar, especially playing arpeggios, the type of thing we might do with chords while we're singing. Although there's solo pieces that also have this sort of technique, but I'm not specifically in this quick answer episode talking about classical guitar or solo fingerstyle guitar playing, though this technique does play into both of those. But I am going to be talking about how we do finger picking patterns that we can play while we sing or we accompany somebody else singing or that also plays into these songs where it's just a solo piece for the guitar altogether. So we'll go ahead and dive in. The first thing with these plucking patterns is we need to assign our right hand to certain strings. And so I have it written up here on the board, but before we talk about that I need to mention the finger style really came to us from Spain and from Italy. The guitar really was born in that part of the world. And because of that, it's the letters for the Spanish words for our fingers that are used to represent our fingers, and that's sort of universal. So P, pulgar, is for thumb. It's the only one that's capitalized. That's a way to remember it. Thumb is different from our fingers, but P equals the thumb. I equals index. So indio, index is the same. So that's easy. Middle, M, it's also easy because it's the same. But the A is a little bit different because that's for the ring finger. But I've taught at the university a lot, so that's the ah, you got a ring on that finger, right? So the excitement of engagements. I have not yet experienced that, but I had many roommates who did experience that over my college years. So it's the ah, I've got a ring on that finger, and now I have students that experience that as well from time to time. So that's a way to remember the ring finger. It's also just the other lowercase one, and so I and M match up, index and middle, the same. So, P-I-M-A, when finger picking patterns are written out, those letters are telling us which finger to use to pluck at a certain point within the pattern. So we need to know those letters, and then we need to know what strings we're going to pluck with. So, I've written up here just uh, sort of a diagram of the guitar. It's the same as if you were looking at your guitar straight on, so it matches up like so. So we've got the high string up on top and the low string down on the bottom line, so the same as tablature. So our thumb plucks the bass strings, it plucks the lower three, so the fourth string, the fifth string, or the sixth string. In standard positioning, it's going to pluck one of those three strings. It doesn't pluck them all at the same time, it plucks the bass note of the chord, so we'll come back to that. Then the index always plucks the third string. The middle finger always plucks the second string. The ring finger always plucks the high string, or the E string, the top string, string number one. The pinky just moves with the ring string, or the ring finger. It doesn't pluck on its own in standard positioning. Most of the time, that's sort of been the case. The only time you'll see the pinky get used is when people are holding a pick between thumb and index, and then you have middle, ring, and pinky. But that's not standard. Most of us, a pinky's a lot shorter. Mine's a whole knuckle shorter, so it's a lot more work to try and get the pinky than it's actually worth it. And most of the patterns uh, are done with just three fingers. Some are even done with less. Three fingers and a thumb, I should say. Some are done with two fingers and a thumb. So, the way this works then is depending on a chord, the chord determines which one of the three low strings, the three bass strings, that we're going to be plucking. So if I play an E minor, the thumb is going to pluck the lowest note in that chord, which is the bass note. And that bass note is going to be on the bass strings, so string four, five, or six. So if I'm playing an E minor, my thumb is going to pluck the low E string. So the, the, the lowest string in the chord is the low sixth string. It's actually played open. It's an E. So that's the one my thumb would pluck if I was playing and I needed to do a thumb pluck. If I was doing C, well the lowest note in that chord is the third fret of the fifth string. So my thumb is going to pluck the fifth string because that's the lowest note in the chord. 
If I was doing a G, the lowest note is at the third fret of the sixth string, so I'm going to pluck the sixth string with my thumb because that's the lowest note in the chord. If I was playing a D, well, I'm going to pluck the open fourth string because that's the lowest note in the chord. So the thumb is going to pluck the lowest note in a chord. Then what happens is we're going to have some sort of finger picking pattern, and no matter what, every time the index plucks, despite what the chord is, it's going to always pluck that G string or the third string. The middle finger is going to always pluck the second string. The ring finger is going to always pluck the top string, regardless of what the chord is. This is standard position. Now there are ways to manipulate this that sort of change up the standard positioning in our right hand, moving everything higher on strings or lower on strings. So for example, I can bring my three fingers that are on these top three strings, I can bring them to the, the second, third, and fourth strings and then use my thumb for the low two. That's one way that this sometimes gets manipulated. Another way is to move these fingers forward, not use the ring finger at all, but put the index on the second and the middle on the high string, and then the thumb will play the bottom four. That's another alteration. So when you're learning finger picking patterns or arpeggio patterns, then if there is some sort of alteration that's needed, it'll be specified. But most of the time we just assume that we're in standard positioning. And then sometimes if we're playing a chord and we're like, ooh, I'd like to do it this way instead, then of course we can do that. But standard positioning is what we're going to be working at here right this moment. So we'll get a finger picking pattern. This is the way finger picking patterns are written. There's usually rhythmic notation and you can check out my quick answer video on rhythmic notation if you need to. But we have some sort of rhythm written here. And then up above each one of those rhythmic figures will be a letter representing which finger we're going to use to pluck that particular rhythm within when we're playing within the music. So this particular one goes P-I-M-A, P-I-M-A, Pima, pretty classic. So just with an E minor, because you actually don't even have to worry about your left hand because we're not going to be plucking the fourth or fifth strings, we can assign our fingers to those strings and our thumb, and we're going to pluck the sixth string for the, for the, uh, the P, the thumb, and then index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle, ring. And that's just how that pattern goes, just like that. Thumb, index, middle, ring. So you can just do that over and over with me, kind of get comfortable going P, I, Now, a little bit on technique. Our arm comes around like it normally does, just for strumming chords, though we might pull it back just a little bit so this under part of the forearm might be what's actually sitting on the side of the guitar, where the side and the top meet, so right on that, on that spot. It might be just a little bit back. It kind of depends on the size of your guitar. The important thing is that there's a little bit of an arch. If you put your hand out just naturally and you let it sit, there's going to be a slight break, a slight arch. It's not held completely f completely flat, but there's usually just a slight one. Now if we overdo it, we're putting tension. We don't want tension through the hand, but if you sit it there and it's just completely relaxed without tension, that's the sort of thing that we want. And there's a nice natural arch to that. And so when I turn my hand this way, there's a nice natural arch. I'm not bent up. We don't want this up position. We don't want to have our, and we don't want any kind of reflex. We just want it to be natural. When we come around, that's what we want with our hand. That's how we want it. And then where our fingers are going to meet the strings should be right under this big main joint. And then the motion is just like closing the hand. That should be the motion. If you think of a young child, even like an infant, very soon on, right away, they can grab onto things. That's a natural motion. That's the strength in our hands, is the grabbing motion. Our hands are really good at grabbing, but they're weak in flexing. There's not a lot of strength in opening the hand. That's the release. The strength is in holding on, and then we release. We hold on and we release. So when plucking the strings, we want to use that same kind of strength. It's about closing the hand, 
using this big joint, the big joint, to actually pluck the strings and not the little ones. So to have that happen, when I come around, I need my natural arch to sit right there. I just need it. I don't want to collapse the wrist. Collapsing the wrist makes it so all I can do is do that flu uh, flexing kind of pull back, release. And we don't want that. We want to be able to do the one-handed clap, the close your hand kind of motion. And to do that, I have to have the arch. So you want that arch, and then your fingers can just pull right back through just in that one-handed clap. And you can practice that if you put your thumb on the sixth string, look down and make sure you've got an arch, not a collapsed hand, but a nice natural arch that matches that natural break when you just hold your hand in the air. And then that your knuckle, the big joint, sits above the strings and the, finger, the fingers are curled back right under, to that, under that, so they're not sitting way out here because out here there's a problem, there's no room to go through, but we want them right under and then they can just close. So that's how, that's how that works. P, I, M, A, thumb, index, middle, ring. So you want to watch for that. It's a way to get tone. It's also just a way to work the hand better. Okay, we're going to put this with a chord progression just briefly here. So I've got written G, E minor, C, and D. We'll just use that chord progression. It's easy as that. And we'll do this pattern once per chord. So it's really going to be twice on the pattern. P, I, M, A, P, I, M, A. But that's once through that measure's worth of writing there for 4-4 four, four time. So first let's just kind of get comfortable with the pattern on G. Do it a few times. And then E minor. Get comfortable with E minor. We were just doing that one. Don't even have to have the left hand. all of these when I was talking about which note we're going to uh, pluck with the thumb. But this one's the sixth string, sixth string, fifth string, fourth string. Now with the thumb pluck, you want to watch out. You don't want your thumb to be waving from this small joint. It should all come from the big thumb joint. And it just brushes along the side of the thumb. When I finish off, it usually looks like one of those little ribbons that sometimes gets worn for different causes like breast cancer or support the troops, that sort of thing. But just one of those little ribbons that crosses over. When my thumb plucks through, it's just pushing down and, and crossing right there. Okay, here we go. So you're going to have G, and we'll have G, and then we'll have E minor, C, and D. One, and two, and ready, and go. And G, G, E minor, E minor, C, C, D, and we'll repeat G, G, E minor, C. by pinching on that G, or you can strum on that G. So that's one you can warm up with. You can try that with other songs and other progressions. And if you want other picking patterns, besides ones that come with the Chords and Harmony book, there's some in there, then you can go ahead and check out other quick answer videos that talk about finger picking patterns, different types of patterns for 3-4 time, for 4-4 four, four time, 6-8 time, that sort of thing. Hope you're having fun playing the guitar. Take care. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. 
You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.